presentation. Can we call this to order uh, at 6.07 p.m.? Welcome our guests. Um, this meeting is called um, recently for the purpose of uh, figuring out what our next steps are going to be with regard to budget timeline. Um, but let's see if there's any, is there any interest in other agenda items? I had asked Scott to provide an update if he could on the going on over the callus that I've been made aware of in part of the articles committee. Right, and um, I would be interested in maybe making a motion about the budget. Okay. As well, well that that will come under the action okay. section if Great. that works for you. Of course. Anything else you guys want? Um, so back to our guests, welcome. Uh, was there anything that people want to talk about specifically? Or are you just here to observe? Yes, to yeah. observe. Yes, just observe, okay, great. Well, let's get to it then. Um, so discussion item, need for advice regarding next steps on budget and teacher contracts. Bill, do you have a, an intro to this topic? I do. I handed out, I'm sorry, I only had a few of them, so they're out there, what I have left in the audience. Um, and if we have any extras, we'd like to get them out there. Um, I provided a timeline, the possible t timeline drafts, just to kind of say what are the timelines that we're looking at um, for possible either a local budget, if U32 were to put a budget forward, or a merge budget. Um, but before you made that decision, I, the reason I, in consultation with Adrian, um, said I think that you as a board should select an attorney that you get fiscal, um, and fiscal guide, guidance on fiscal statutes and on timing of warning statutes to confirm what I put together here and, um, and regard with what's going forward with Act 46. I think you as a board should choose who you'd like I have names of folks that we've worked with for the past three years who've advised us through Act 46, uh, but you could choose someone else as well. And I think that that's something you should consider as a board. You may or may not want to do that. So that's what I bring you is that um, you have some important decisions. One of the things that's a critical date that's at the bottom of this timeline is by April 15th, the board needs to notify teachers either by offering them a contract. Uh, and if you don't offer them a contract, they're free to um, to look at other places and other positions. And along with ESP has the same requirement for that. And if there are any reductions in force for the next fiscal year, you need to take them by April 15th. So you will see that either you can look at those Usually the practice in Washington Central has been that we wait for a budget to be adopted at town meeting. We usually have the contracts all ready to go. We hand them out as quickly as possible and uh, teachers have 30 days to return contracts. Um, there is a hiring crunch in Vermont right now for certain endorsed positions, special educators, math, uh, foreign language, speech language pathologists. If we're not hiring now, we won't be after after April first. There aren't candidates, so I wanted to make you aware of, as a board of the timelines, the pieces that play in and out of this. If you have questions for things I didn't cover, um, I'd be glad to answer them. But those are kind of where you sit as a you sit as a board. Right now. So in terms of the two scenarios, the merge budget, there's there's nothing to do at this stage. We're waiting for the injunction before we can call the organizational meeting. Yeah. In the case of... Uh, and, and I just want to correct you, we're trying to figure out who, who calls that meeting right now. Uh, I do not know. Because the agent, agent agency called... The initial one, and that question has been asked back to the agency, but we have not heard back. Okay. Okay. It's an important detail. Um, in the case of a U32 only budget, um, we could potentially call um, warrant, warrant a local budget. Other schools have for town meeting. Um, we're not sure of the legal legalities of that. that that's why I think you and need that, That's why you're recommending. I'm recommending council to you. You choose if you'd like. And, and the four people that we've worked with have been 
We've worked with Scott Cameron's firm. We've worked with Pietro Lin's firm. We worked with Chris Leopold's firm, and we've had Paul Giuliani. And some of the schools, the four districts that are in the suit have been working with the attorneys, um, Charlie Marion, David Kelly, and I'm forgetting the third one. Dennis McGillian. Thank you, Dennis McGillian. Other questions? Um, I, I, sorry, just to be clear, then the action is to ask for advice? That's Bill's recommendation at this mm -hmm. stage. Yeah. Um, are you, is this because we're so uncertain of the legal? Yes, I'm uncertain. It's your choice as a board who you want to seek advice from. I'm asking you to make that determination on who you would like counsel from. Hmm. We, we, so different scenarios at this stage, we could disregard Bill's recommendation and go forward with no action or um, proposing a, a budget, or we could seek legal counsel. I guess the the question is, um, in the state's eyes, Act 46 is, you know, we are a unified union, and we are to move forward on a merged budget, but we don't have a way to do that right now. So, is the, you know, is a is a vote on a U32 budget proper? Does it have legal standing? That, that, I guess that would be the, hmm. the question we would ask. And as, but as far as I understand it, the other statutes, like the ones I, um, I mentioned, um, so those Scott, have not been Yeah, this is where I'm not going to get into the debate anymore. No, no, no. I, so I just, just want to say to you that, that I, this is why I think you need legal counsel to talk to that through. And you should choose someone that you'd like to use to do that. But you may choose not to do that, and that's fine. But that's what I'm recommending to you. Okay. Is there any, um, what if we were to, for example, as um, I shared with, with Kari and Adrian and, and um, you and Stephen, the idea of warning the U32 budget, then we can, we can at least, you know, lay down that marker and then, you know, consult with attorneys along the way. Um, it just seems to me that I, I, I have this sense that there's this weird game of chicken going on in which our budget is kind of the, the piece in play. And I would like to take it out of play um, because it's just too important to, um, to have it slip. Agree with you. I said to I said to the association last week, my main goal is protecting their jobs right now. But I think you need advice, and I, that can be happen pretty quickly. I think you can still hit what you said in your email. You like to have an April 9th election. Mm -hmm. You could probably still do both. I mean, have the legal advice and decide to warn it. Okay. Do any of the firms on your list have particular expertise in this arena? Or are they all for they all equally? Except for Paul Giuliani. And Paul Giuliani's work, when he has worked with schools, has usually been on bonds and finance, okay. not so much on Act 49, 46 area. Um, the other three firms I've listed are work with school districts. And there are others as well. Steve Stissel's another one we haven't worked with him. So, I mean, there are others that, there are three, there's really about four or five downs where I have a there, there may be, those are the five that I know of that do school work. Chris Leopold has worked with us specifically on Act 46. He's been advising That's who the Articles of Agreement Committee selected to work with. Yeah. Which I guess you haven't had. I've been on a couple conference calls with him. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I would have no hesitation in consulting with him based on the little I know. Mm -hmm. But he definitely has some expertise in this particular law. Yeah, um, I hate to say this, um, this is not a comment on the legal profession at all, but it just seems to me that we've had um, a pretty steady stream of, of legal advice through this process, and um, we don't seem to have 
really gotten anywhere. Um, and uh, it, I'm sure it has nothing to do with the quality of that advice, which undoubtedly is very professional. But um, I think at, at a certain point, you know, it's our job to do our job. Um, and I, I feel confident enough that if we follow the existing statutes, that um, the worst that can happen is that the, the preliminary injunction is not issued and we go forward with the merger and the warning is superseded. Um, Which warning is superseded? The, the U32 the budget. The local school budget. The local school budget is So you're proposing to go forward with that? Yes. And wait to see what happens with the murder Well, we can't, yeah. Um, at this point, um, the transitional board is adjourned to an event certain, as I understand it. Um, the issuance of the prelim preliminary injunction, or non-issuance of that. Um, so that date is, nobody knows what that date is. However, we do know that there's a critical date of April 15. So to me, the, um, just the, the sensible and safe thing to do is to warn at least our local budget so we have that covered in case the judge, in this you know, sort of either or situation, in case the judge does issue the preliminary injunction, that, okay, we've got that set, we're, we're on track. Um, and if he doesn't, then we just, you know, it's plan B or plan A or whichever, you know, it's merge budget versus the school budget. I know it, it, it's not pretty, it's not elegant, but um, I, just, I just want to build in that redundancy so that we don't get stuck in a, in a bind without a budget, with everybody sort of saying, this is what we're going to mess, et cetera. Okay, now I'm hearing four options. One is we could do nothing. Two is we could seek a recommendation before we do anything else. Three, uh, we could warn, as you say, and, and take a vote and see what happens. And fourth would be, I, I also heard you suggest this, warn and get a recommendation. Yeah. And if the recommendation true. comes back that this has no legal basis, don't do this, then we really have to consider Well, then we would warning. have to reconsider the warning. But, I mean, um, Is there any reason that that fourth option couldn't be seek advice and then warn? The problem is time. Um, I, and also, I mean, um, I have to confess, when this was originally billed as an emergency meeting, um, and I guess it's since been sort of tamped down to a special meeting, um, I thought, oh great, we're going to do something, because it's an emergency, and in an emergency you do something. Um, seeking advice doesn't really rise to that level um, for me. I, I mean, I think advice is really important, but I think the sense of urgency is correct. Um, the reason why we're here on a, on a lousy night on school vacation week, um, I, I think there is, there, there is important work to be done. So I would just say, let's go for it. And, and do it, and if we, um, if in the, you know, in the course of time we discover that um, it, we need to shift something, then we do that. But, but at least we have something scheduled that will give us budget. I see the logic of that. Why, why did you pick April 9th? Um, it's a Tuesday. I briefly looked at the schedules of the towns, and it didn't appear. There didn't appear to be anything. It's a week or it's one week before the April vacation. Is that correct? Or two weeks? One. It's one. one. Um, so it doesn't coincide with April vacation. 
and it's um, 42 days from now, not including today and not including April 9th, which gives perhaps, um, if I might just sort of mention my one concern about this, is that it becomes a bit of a um, forcing event for two towns that um, uh, Middlesex and East Montpelier, they might feel obliged uh, or kind of dragged into doing the same thing on the same day. Um, Why not Worcester? Well, doesn't Worcester vote from the floor? They don't have an article on their town meeting to talk about budget. Ah. Uh -huh. So, we need a special meeting. Will Sunny from the Secretary of State confirm that to Will Baker today? Uh huh. Interesting. So they could, they would vote. They would have to have a special town, a special school district meeting. Town, a uh, floor, floor, floor meeting. meeting. Yeah. The, the new one. Right, and that <laughs> would not work. I would not imagine on April 9th. But Worcester would be able then to do it. I wouldn't work on April 9th. Because people work. Um, We've yeah. had. We've had public meetings of that ilk on a weekday night. Ah, Worcester. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um. I, I think it's a good point that we should be thinking about the other towns. Um, two of them are going to meet later this week. East Montpelier met on Friday? Yes. What did they do? They decided to seek counsel of Chris Leopold. Okay. They're willing to work with others as long as on the limited scope that they wrote their motion for, which I brought those minutes with me. Uh, Middlesex is meeting on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, and Worcester is meeting at 6 o'clock on Thursday night. And have you reached out to Chris Leopold? Do you have a sense of his time? Yeah, he's willing to make his time as soon as we can. Okay. And yeah. as, soon as, as, you know, as soon as we can get people together, I said, I talked to him today, and he said... And East Montpelier is not looking at dates yet for, in terms of... They said that on Friday at their meeting they were willing to work with others, so they okay. said let's try to pull this together so we can share the expense, but um, they also understood if it didn't work, it didn't work. So they were being a little flexible, but felt, you know, wanting to get this done as well. Um, tell me more about 30 to 40 days. Is that really a window? It's the window for posting the warning. You can post the warning 30 to 40 days. So the, the drop dead date, in a way, is somewhere yeah. around April or March 14th? Uh, hold on. If you want off of what date? Off of April 15th. If we want to, we want to have a vote before. So if you want to, if, well, let's, can we go back to Scott's date so we don't get so confused here? If we, sure. April 9th. Should be you the would, Tuesday before the 15th, yeah. Right, which would be the Tuesday before the 15th. You would have to have a date of um, the 10th or 11th, because there's 31 days. I literally like to count these things to make sure I don't yeah, have a math right. problem. <laughs> I, I did the same thing. Yeah, it's like I literally, because I made a math problem too much with, you know, I thought I think I'm pretty good at math. Say, say again, Mark. So it would be March uh, 10th or 11th. 10th is a Sunday, 11th is a Monday, you would have to post it by. I'd okay. want to count that just to be sure, and if you want me to do that right now, I can do that. Why don't we say March 8th? Just and then for the 15th, you'd be looking at, you know, the that's a Monday, so you would be looking at the 15th or 16th of March. There's 31 days of March, so. So, so what I'm hearing is that we could still make this March, or it's April 9th, which I think makes a lot of sense, make that date if we make a decision by March 8th, which is, what, um, end of next week, right? Yep. Friday of next week. And if you were going to go with the budget that you were presented and recommended, we can spin that up pretty quickly into a warning. Yeah, how, how long would that take a, a day? An hour. We're that close. But we've had dual, as we as we talked about in the <laughs> committee, very back in August, press dual, dual options. So it's been prepped both ways. It's prepped both ways. Um, speaking for myself, I would not be comfortable going forward um, without legal counsel. No, I I, do, I don't mind the idea of warning just to get get the ball rolling, um, and then get a recommendation and, and go from there. 
However, I do see the logic of syncing up with the other schools um, in terms of, of the legal advice if we all choose the same council and the, um, the vote date. Yeah, I concur with that. Me too, and I, I think that um, using the, the attorney that we used prior might, Chris ex Leopold. might expedite the process. Well, uh, yeah, essentially, if yeah. East Montpelier is already selected, there's yeah. at least, that would at least be two schools. Right? No. Yeah. So then, if we went in that, with that scenario, we would be calling another meeting of this board, East Montpelier, hopefully, and, and maybe others within the next 10 days. Another emergency meeting? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't use the emergency. These are special. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. According to the statute. Uh-huh. Emergency is one that you have to have within 24 hours. You don't necessarily you post as soon as you can. Uh huh. I think that's a nice plan. I hesitate to name them in the process because we can't speak for them. But can right. right. Yeah. My. I mean, if it if it all works out in that wonderful, um, I I hesitate to say utopian way, but um, I would just like to know that if there are any glitches along the way, if, if um, that we have to do this, that we need a budget. Um, and I mean, it may be possible we can't get a quorum together in the next 10 days. That, that could happen. Yeah. Um, so is there any logic to calling the warning the April 9th now Sort of holding it in advance. I, I, would, I would feel much better so about that. Just a voice of information. I'm not trying to stop you from either way or both. Just a point of information. You have a meeting scheduled for March, the Wednesday after town meeting. Oh, we do? Of this group um, on March 6th. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just take it as it is. Yeah. Just, yeah, it, it's still. It's still kind of feels wrong to me that even a, such a basic step as warning our budget, we have to seek legal counsel. It's just something that we've done that's one of the basic, most elemental functions of the school board. Things have changed, though. Yeah, but they... You started, they, they, you started off the comments <coughs> speaking to... I don't remember how you were in the Speaking to acting under the law as we understood it. That law has changed. The law that used to have us call that meeting is no longer the law of the land for, for the time being. But it is. That's for the, the time, time being, it hasn't it been repealed. It, it hasn't, the, the new law of the land is, is like hanging there in the air. Um, Whereas the, uh, the statutes are, are there. there, and as far as I know, um, nothing has changed there. Well, as far as I know, I don't know enough to be confident moving forward without the advice of, of Ease and Boyer. Yeah, I, th I think, I think most of the board is there, but um, I mean, I, did, I am sympathetic to the idea of getting it on the, in the books, uh, however, if we are, if we have a meeting, I didn't realize we had a meeting on March sixth. I mean, that my suggestion would be, let's go with that date if we were the attorney. I'm quite sure we're going to have a quorum, and we could even potentially do a I'm carousel. Bring you, I'll bring you a warning, prep, ready to go, <clears throat> right. Scott. I, 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 we need to bring you back together to have you approve the warning. I, I would like you to do that. I don't think you want to just give me blame. Playing for responsibility to do that, <laughs> and I need you all to sign that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's and not my authority to approve a warning. And, and I either way, I mean, if, if even if you said we want a warning tonight, I, that might ask me. So when the next time we're getting together to approve the warning? Yeah. It, like I'm serious. When it, it'll take us an hour to prep the warning, but I need all of you to approve it and authorize it to go out. So are these the instructions that we're giving Bill then? To to. to it could be. I haven't heard a motion yet, but I I would move that we instruct Bill to 
propel one for our next meeting on March 6th, did you say? I can do that. Yeah. Um, for uh, an April 9th date. Right. And that will provide a chance for the, uh, the others, the other towns, at least those that are meeting between now and then, will um, have a chance to react to this initiative sort of and will be able to kind of say, hey, that sounds good, or whoa, wait a second, what about another day that will serve better? Sure, I like that idea. Okay. Um, you want to say a little more about the warning, the warning of the... Of the U32 budget <coughs> for 20, for the school year 2019-2020. As, as, what did we do? Did we pass it? Did we transmit it? Did we? You'll need to, you'll need to approve it. We've done that most years. We usually, when you approve it, we bring the warning to the same meeting. Okay. When we brought the budget to you, you um, recommended it to the transition board. It's all there. We recommended it. Thank you. To the transition board. It's all you did at that time. Right. You didn't approve the budget. No. It wasn't our just approved. We waved it on with our blessings. Yeah. Okay. I will, I will be asking you, and not necessarily at that meeting, but somewhere before April 15th, um, where you stand on authorizing contracts to be sent out mm -hmm. at the board. Mm -hmm. And you'll probably want to talk to the attorney about that as well. Okay. It, is that part of the, <clears throat> the brief for the attorney? For yes, because you have a mixture of teacher master agreement and statutes and fiscal requirements within the state, which are all in statutes as well, that you need to make decisions as a board. We have a motion. Can you please read it back? I just have that he moved to instruct the superintendent to prepare a warning of the U32 budget for the school year 2019-20 for the next board meeting, okay. March 6th, for okay. an April 9th vote. <coughs> Okay. And we're not at this point dealing with the legal counsel piece, but I, maybe it's cleaner to just leave it at that for the moment. Is there a second? No second. No. Discussion? We kind of did. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so that passes. Is there a motion on legal counsel, potentially also for March 6th? It may be another time, so I don't want to give you that. Okay, okay, okay. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to coordinate calendars right now. But right. I think what I've heard from East Montpelier and talking with Chris McVeigh, the chair of Middlesex, and Will Baker, the chair of uh, Worcester, they want to do it as soon as possible. Okay. So okay. I just want, I don't want any illusions. Of, they want to do what as soon as possible? Meet with the attorney as soon as possible. Or if there's a collaborative approach, if not, right. do it independently. Is, is there a motion about seeking legal counsel? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure what to say. We're s so it would be. We've got those two bodies seeking legal counsel also. The only so way we're seeking legal understand. counsel right now is East Montpelier. I guess what we're looking for is to seek legal counsel around the legitimacy of us. So before you make a motion, may I read something sure. to you? Sure, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> the East Montpelier Board, in their motion that they said, was to seek legal counsel for advice regarding next steps on budgets and teacher contracts. Um, Ruben made the motion to select Chris Leopold as legal counsel for advice, ensuring East Montpelier Elementary School remains operational, including advice on teacher master agreement, and presenting a budget for FY 1920. The motion passed unanimously. I would mimic their motion <laughs> replacing me and U32 for Ruben and East Montpelier. I second it. Okay, second. Discussion? Should we think about the, um, actually, a second opinion? Like we see, doubled the legal counsel from the guy who said he didn't want to seek any to be <laughs> Yeah. The, the, the reason is because um, 
lawyers are not unlike I doctors in that regard. And um, it might be nice to have a stereoscopic view and, and to spread the wealth so that, you know, <laughs> we, we feed <laughs> all the lawyers. And, <laughs> and doubling the cost. I um, look at it as we're in uncharted right. water. Right. And so I agree with that second opinion. So the question would be who? In that case, is there sort of a? I, I don't really know these lawyers and, and how they, um, where where they come at their their material from what kind of perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're not seeking a legal. I mean, a written opinion. It sounds like there's more is. Is that what you want, players? No, they're not seeking a just a, it's a conversation. Call. call and hopefully be on site. Oh, okay. Be here. I, I, I mean, we didn't really get into it that much. I would highly suggest that you have <coughs> attorneys here if you're going to have two attorneys. Um, that seems pretty unusual to have two two yeah. attorneys in the room. Yeah, I'm just raising it as as a consideration. Well, um, there is a motion on the floor. Who so seconded it? Sorry. I did. Okay, thank you. So, we need to, need to be amended or have a second, a second action after this. Yeah, I, I sort of wanted to flush out people's yeah. opinions. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess, thank you. You, you're, you like it? I do, but I'm, I'm thinking about the, t the, the timeline um, prior to having two attorneys in the room. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that they could flush it out and, and, and come back to us with something legit. But I'm genuinely curious as to what they would both find. Mm. Yeah. What do you think, Carl? While I understand the drive to seek out two opinions for the sake of strengthening our understanding. Um, from, I guess the reason I'm seeking out the legal information to begin with is really sort of as a safety net to our assumptions to the course of action we're taking. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, having, you know, being able to point to a legal opinion in terms of my decision making representative of Worcester. That's adequate to me. I have heard enough concern about expenses over lawyers from our populace in the yeah. last couple of weeks that I am not inclined to spend twice as much as I need to to feel comfortable moving forward myself. No, I bad. So there's an aspect I of want to err term. on, <laughs> on I, I want to err sure. on my own safety net and the frugality of the taxpayers. Frugality on behalf of the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yep. <laughs> uh, again, um, I guess that solves the coordinating two lawyers. <laughs> yeah. I, I think um, what Carl says is very sensible. Revisiting my experience of, of um, working on a lot of these issues where there has been legal advice from time to time, I've noted that the legal advice tends to be in the form of, no, you really can't do that, or this is really kind of problematic. And it always seems to be in work in the direction of suppressing action. Um, what I would be very happy to have is actually uh, an attorney advise us 
how do we make sure, given the universe of possibilities that is out there that we might have to face, how do we make sure we have a budget going into the next mm -hmm. school year? So I and ask that question when they're here, and I can yeah. forward that question to them. I think for sure these are probably just done. Yeah. You know, but that's what I think. That's my number one question. Yeah. And without the voters, we can't guarantee anything. <clears throat> so I don't know the legal opinion matters at that point. If we yeah. can't, if we can't get a budget I, voted on, I just think you need to be advised statutorily what your options are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what you should. Advice on your event, the board is going to make the decision. Yeah, and that's right, and and that's what we have to do. That's our job. Colleague Chris McVeigh says legal advice is opinion. Yeah. And you're exactly right, we should be asking for what our options are and what the risk associated with the various options are because attorneys are, are risk averse. And you know, you just have to have that, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Could we repeat the motion? Yeah. You want to hear it? I don't want to get uh, Yeah, it's just, it's the same verbiage that he's not fully used. So Carl Whitkey moved to select Chris Leopold as legal counsel for advice on ensuring U32 remain operational, including advice on the teacher master agreement and presenting a budget for FY1920. Great. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? Okay, so that passes. Anything else on this topic? All right. Um, so you'll be in touch about I'll be in touch. I'm going to be talking with Chris tomorrow. So um, I told him today that tomorrow I'll start talking to him about dates because I want to find out where this board landed. So at least I can have two boards. So if we know we have at least two, I'm going to start putting dates together. But, you know, we'll see if we're Middlesex and Worcester. Right. And what are the, is, are those meetings Wednesday and Thursday? Wednesday and Thursday. I'm really shooting for Monday or Tuesday. There's actually going to be some people here on Monday night, right, in this room? Uh, <laughs> it's Monday night. So it's, that's it's that's the possibility as well. That's, that's why I'm saying you should respond to your Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, yeah. Tuesday. Tuesday's time meeting. I understand. <laughs> I understand what it is. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to get to you as quick the information as quickly as you can. Okay. Um, so I had asked Scott to um, bring us up to speed, if you could, about what's happening in Calus with regard to the property there. Right. Uh, well, I think members of the articles committee, which is just Two right. of us um, are aware of this, but Callis, the Callis Select Board and the Callis School Board have been meeting together to look at uh, securing, once again, uh, securing uh, rights of Callis townspeople to use of the property after uh, you know, a possible consolidation. So there are basically three documents that the town, that the municipality of Callis's lawyer has drawn up. Um, his name, just for your info, is Jim Barlow. Um, one of them is an easement. One of them is a school use agreement. And one of them is, an, is a, a purchase option. As I recall, and and Bill, please um, feel free to correct me if I if I say anything unclear or incorrect. Um, the easement would essentially allow the town of Callis to continue using the Callis Elementary School for the same purposes that Callis Elementary is used for now. Say, um, emergency shelter. Um, location for town meeting, um, for different town board and commission meetings, um, that sort of thing. Um, what the easement does is essentially, and, and this is why the, the lawyers were brought in to kind of scrutinize this, um, it would 
the easement would convey with the property to the new consolidated district. And um, my understanding is that the lawyers found nothing wrong with such an arrangement per se. The issue was equity with the other towns, that the other towns, you know, by rise, ought to have something comparable. Or a um, chance for that. Or a chance for that, exactly. Um, the school use agreement is, do, does not, well, I guess the agreement goes with the school, but um, it, it, there's a certain term to it. I believe so. I have to tell you, Scott, that I stayed a little, I stayed out of it. Okay. To try not to trip it up. <laughs> That's absolutely I, I, fine. I know that mm -hmm. Scott Cameron has given back advice, mm -hmm. and his, his partner has done the advice as well as a real estate attorney. Um, so, right. he, you know, I don't have his advice in front of me, so I don't want to paraphrase from what I don't remember. Sure. I, just, no, that's, that's I know that there were some concerns that Scott Cameron brought up to the Dallas school district. The, right. the, the, the way I recall, and I might be getting this wrong, that the easement was basically, you know, as you say, there's, it, it, it seems fine on a surface as long as the other towns are aware of it and have the similar option yes. to create something. Um, the other two pieces, it seemed like that there was actually a diminishment in value of, of the property um, and was a more problematic um, from the attorney's point of view on this. Um, so, I don't know. I, yeah, that's sort of the first option, the school, op the option to purchase um, agreement that would convey as well. Um, these are these are all issues that we deal with in the articles committee right. that the town is proposing to kind of um, incorporate into the property prior to consolidation. So it's uh, it's essentially dragging the what what might otherwise be articles language into the um, sort of the, the property. That's where, that's where Scott Cameron got his piece about <clears throat> property value, because if ever, they couldn't strip them out of the easement. Right, right. And so the you, can't, you can't strip it out of the deed, so mm -hmm. if the town ever wanted to sell it, because the town has the first refusal, they would still have a hard time selling it because they could diminish the value of this part of the <laughs> So anyway, I, I guess I just wanted to make sure that other, other board members were aware of this. Yeah. It seems significant. and. Wanted to get a sense of what were the next steps for Cal. So are they are they uh, are they planning to vote on this in the uh, near future? Or? Well, um, there seems to be some thought that it could this this could be done without a vo without a town vote, just between the school board and the select board. Mm -hmm. But I don't. My understanding is. Um, that the Callis School Board is not yet ready to do that. They want to make sure that everything's on the up and up and, and kosher. This was at least my communication with Susanna yeah. um, to that effect. And do you know, if, do they have a plan to reach out to other school boards or other towns? I, I think so. I think um, Dorothy in particular wanted to share this methodology with the articles group um, to make sure that uh, everybody was aware and was able to kind of think about it. Okay. Kari, can I ask a question? Please. Um, does this have anything to do with U32 and the property here? I, it shouldn't. It shouldn't affect okay. the property. So this isn't a matter for our school board? No, this is, okay. this is sort this of is a... That's fine. Uh, I just, I was, yeah. that's fine. I just yeah. wondered why our school board was considering Oh, because we consider everything. <laughs> uh, it was informational. It's informational, and, and because there's representatives from other towns here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Target of opportunity. Yeah. Understood. <clears throat> okay, any other questions about that or discussions? Not for this meeting. All right, is there anything else?
you know if, if not, not the audience. Um, may I just ask how we're communicating the results of this to our community? Mm. I, I'm, I'm just asking for board communication's sake. Um, yeah. I mean, I feel like I, I'm asking as a community member right now, actually, if yeah, you don't mind. Um, I'd like for our communities to know what's happening so that they're aware. Sure. So it's, it's something beyond our normal front porch forum. No, nope. I mean, I just called for an We actually have town meeting in one week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, but I, I, I do think a front porch forum posting yeah. would make You're sense. You're always sense. writing stuff, Kari. Do you want me to do something? Yeah, then, yeah I'd be happy with that. Okay. You want to draft it, yeah. something and run it by me, sure. and we'll get it out by the end of the week. I mean, a, a few sentences, I think. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, no, a, good it's, really, yeah, it's, it's really a good idea. It's a good idea, and it will be our talking points for town meeting, right? Because we're all going to town meeting and talking about something. Wow. I'll be going to town on this. Never mind. Okay. Um. All right, Scott, so thank you. Volunteering for that. Anything else? Our guests, do you have any <clears throat> final comments or questions for us? Thanks for I, I certainly appreciate hearing the conversation and the deliberations that you're going through. It's really challenging. Yeah. And um, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Uh, yeah. It's such an awful yeah. day. Yeah. I wish we could drive safely on your yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, if that's it, then we'll adjourn by consensus at 6.52.